the we provide a toolbox a toolbox for evolution and a toolbox for freedom and you can see in this period is while uh, governments are fearing a revolution they conduct war war is a tool to avoid revolution to continue the old model here with our consciousness and toolbox for conscious tech will allow you to be free that means to go beyond the existing system that's against it beyond and what does that mean is that you step out the fear zone you don't need to fear anymore we can co-create we can collaborate at a level never done before without division we won't even have to fight for the to switching systems the old system will self disappear i mean take the ai guys they don't even know what they're doing i mean one day the guy is in the one the next day the guy is out and so on <laughs> the next day the guy is in and well is that when you do tech without the conscious when everybody is racing to get the agi which is I mean, AGI in the sense of sent sentience is totally impossible. You cannot have intelligence without intelligence. You know, it's like you cannot have an intelligent system without the seed of organic intelligence. You cannot have life without life. You cannot create emotion without emotion. You cannot create conscious without consciousness. You cannot create energy without energy. So back to these AI races, they all want to be first, to be the one who control the world with AGI. And that's true that if, if they achieve AGI, then they will be the one that actually first will have the power. And so it's a race for control. However, if you go that far where you get the most and the most important uh, uh, powerful artificial general intelligence what does it mean is that mean we will have a system that oh, yes will do ooh, ooh, mathematics will help us solve problems but it's still just a tool but a tool that's so powerful that the one having it might control the world control in a sense that the, the the decision that that one person will take will seem we, so uh, how do you call it so correct mathematically correct subjectively correct that people will follow so it's like a new religion the religion of artificial intelligence the more they have followers the more they will depend on it it's like today we depend on GPS to navigate. So diminishing the organic intelligence. And that's why we have self-destruction of a full society. In a sense that we won't be able to think without AI. We won't be able to do anything without AI. If we don't maintain some kind of organic intelligence. Because you cannot have organic intelligence without organic intelligence. If you rely on artificial intelligence, the organic intelligence will disappear. And that's the self-destruction of the whole society as we know it. We will become like robots, robots following instruction of an AI, meaning we will become artificial, lifeless, consciousnessless. And so that's the main difference between the people that push, 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 race, race, race for an artificial uh, superpower, super intelligence, quantum computing, and so on. The combination of artificial intelligence and quantum computing is fantastic. However, it's super dangerous. A quantum computer will be the computer that is the fastest. Basically, you will resolve logical problem in a blink of a second. And so when you combine that with AI, it gives you immense power. AI is nothing else than accessing to the whole world data in a blink of a second. 
with the computing power of the all world computers matching all world's computer together and so yes you can do fantastic thing and it will be is fantastic it will look like people that will have the quantum computing power plus the artificial intelligence power will be seen like god but an artificial god it's like we are back to the uh what is called you know the adoration at the time of moses you know the golden veil and so on and so will be the golden ai and the golden quantum computing and so yes people will fight for that people will race for that but people will lose their consciousness to reach that and the population the fans mm. that follow this the people who belong to this nation this ai nation will just have destroyed they won't be able to take any decision they won't be able to create anymore i mean generative ai give you random choice random art so the enlightened people will see out of randomness what is really beautiful what is really art and so they will decide but once you don't know how to decide anymore you won't be able to create anymore and a world without creation is a world trapped in the past repeating the same and same and same mistakes again and ai will repeat the same and same mistakes the mistake that it doesn't know it's a mistake the mistake that is not programmed to detect and so yeah it's a tool for self destruction the more you race an ai without consciousness the faster you go to extinction and so i think that's what the open ai board the old board was worried about i mean they belong to ethical ai right and with some admin getting back getting rid of those ethical ai members ethical intelligence people it's more race for profit more race for bringing in the microsoft the big guys in the rest so yes you bring in big money but it's big money to have an ai that is purely artificial the pure synthetic intelligence religion and so yes it's a race it's a race to extension what in the meantime the people that will use technology in consciousness use technology to enhance the organic intelligence meaning a simple tools where we are still making decision where is still unpowered where we are still using our intuition or the things that we are good at where we just have a tools to help us develop things where we are not good at rather than using them so like we have access to infinite knowledge with internet and ai so that we can remember more the machine is perfect for memory has huge memory capacity at least instant like the 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 temporary memory you know that the temporal it's like the front cortex so we can with with organic intelligence combined with synthetic intelligence we can improve our frontal cortex it's like extending our frontal context, cortex to the machine however the center of decision the hippocampus the pineal gland can be developed and enhanced with that logical artificial front cortex text context cortex and that means that we have access to more data that means we can have information data set for more organic intelligence for more processing using our full brain rather than using our 10% conscious thinking we can use our 100% conscious thinking by having a temporal memory that is infinite it's like the current organic intelligence we are aware of only 10% 
to save energy. Nature evolves in, in being efficient, not nature evolves in being wasteful. Artificial intelligence is totally wasteful. It's huge computation in all direction for making simple reasoning. It's the brute force approach of intelligence. Is that we explore all the possibilities to select the fittest. So in a sense, it's like the, the evolution of the world, but at high speed with a lot of wasteful mutation. In nature, yeah, evolution is a little bit the same. Is that the, the thing that does not fit just dies out. And so the bridge force approach AI yeah, is like forcing fast evolution. <laughs> And so yes, it's a rest. If you if if our society is about to go extinct, then the accelerating evolution with AI <laughs> meaning it will accelerate the extinction faster. So yes, we need to move to conscious tech so that we improve our living the intelligence, the organic intelligence of the living, and then being more aware of our capability more aware of our decision-making or intuition. Intuition is, a, 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 is the way of taking shortcuts in the logic, having some signaling within the brain that go beyond the chemistry, the transmission of electrical signals along action, beyond the chemical signaling at all synapses. It's used the sensibility of the brain to detect signals lower than the physical signals. It's exploiting the ability to use intricate particles for communication at a distance, for tapping into the physical world. It's like we have internal qubit in our brains, qubits, and we probably have way much more than the the 70 qubit that we are capable of uh, today with artificial intelligence. And what does that mean is that we are sensing the whole universe within our brain. And so this is something that the machine will never be able to. We won't have millions of qubits available for computing. However, a brain, an organic brain that is quite enough is capable of sensing megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes of information of qubit, meaning being able to sense the current state of the world, of the universe. And sensing mean, meanings observing. Observing meaning raising it to consciousness. And that's the act of creation. When you collapse a waves, a terraqubit, <laughs> waves of information you're creating the universe you organically you're the organic creator of the universe and in that sense you're god not an artificial god but an organic god life expressing itself by being aware being conscious of the state of the universe creating the state of the universe by flipping those qubits that's correspond to our goal, purpose, is that when you have access to those information and observe it, you say, hey, I want this qubit to be a one. I want this qubit to be a zero. And at the scale of the universe, because qubit flipping happened at a distance, you don't need to be at the location of the event. The qubit is, is uh, located. I mean, if we can say it's located because I don't believe there is location, it's omnipresence. So now you can imagine an intelligence that have access to that. And that can be improved with, with the other artificial one. I mean, there is always technology that mimic the ability of the human being along its evolution. I mean, once we were capable of communicating with telepathy, we have cell phone in our real world. So it's a way of being telepath in the three-dimensional world in our daily life without the need to spend the resource and energy to be telepath with everyone, you know. And so it's kind of a easy thing is that 
you can go the artificial way when the organic way is not mandatory. Yes, that helps us. And the brain and the organism, the life with evolved to use the the artificial technology before the organic one. Yeah, just to save some energy. Is the, you rely on the outside rather than relying on the inside to provide us function and service. And it's convenient because the whole evolution of the living is to optimize your energy. There's only one thing, energy, energy everywhere. And so you preserve that energy to give you the chance of survival. You know, is that everything that helps you survive will evolve in that, in the direction, in that direction. And so saving energy in nature, always, always a winning choice for evolution. So offloading some task, some logical calculation to a machine will always be in the direction of the evolution. So the danger is that we totally rely on that and then we do become codependent and then we fail. Technology fails over the long time. Yeah, you take, a, you take, a, it's not self-healing. You take a, a, a machine and leave it alone if you don't maintain it with a living, a living people that maintain the, the machine, it just go crash. <laughs> I mean, have you ever set up uh, like a web services, a website that you don't maintain anymore? It just degrade, decay until it's not functional. You can see that all the 404 broken link on the web, all the things that you set up a few years ago, and it just doesn't work. So artificial life, if we can call it this way, has a very limiting lifespan. About two, three years. Everything about two, three years without attention is in a state of non-functioning. And so you don't want to rely on this type of ephemeral technology for your life. It will be it, it's an apparent saving energy when you immediately use it, but it's a detriment to the environment. So it's a predatory type of approach. Is that you? It's like the the top of the food chain animal that overeats to have high, highly evolved, high dense energy nutrition, but to the detriment of the whole chain. And if if some element of the chain disappears, then you disappear with it. And so intelligence is the same thing. You see, if you rely to an artificial intelligence, just because it saves some internal energy, but it does not save global energy because it's brute force. So you deplete your, the global system and until a, a threshold where you can, it's not sustainable anymore and then you disappear. And so if we learn how to use synthetic intelligence in consciousness, you add the living part to the synthetic part. And so if you do it with consciousness, with awareness, you don't destroy, you don't deplete the whole things because you're aware of it. And so you get the trade-off. What is the optimum thing? Is when to use a cell phone for telepathy without destroying the world, <laughs> meaning that without uh, uh, mining rare metals for the battery of your phone, you know. <laughs> and so it's all a question of measures. What's beneficial for the all? rather than what's beneficial for myself in a predatory way. And consciousness helps you have that. you aware of the impact of your action. And so sometimes it will be better, you know that it will be better to use the organic intelligence. Sometimes it will be better to use the artificial one. Sometimes, and so on. And so there is uh, artificial intelligence is good for a lot of things, you know, like the machine algorithm mathematics uh, uh, tools that we have are fantastic. We as individuals have our time to decide as a group, you know, and if you f try to follow what is the best general interest. I mean, intuition might give you the choice right away. But if you lack intuition, then the machine helps us give optimum choice that we 
cannot imagine. And so it's when we are not fine-tuned to the global, the intuition of what's the global good, then we can rely on the machine, say, hey, help us. And then it's a question of taking shortcuts at the cost of our environment, of course. Technology has a higher cost on the environment. But if we are aware, it's like when you seek, you take medicine without considering the whole system. It's a survival skills. Uh, reflex that we have is that we are in a mode of dying disappearing and then what is life is doing to preserve life and so we realize from time to time on medicine technology is the medicine the cure artificial intelligence is the cure of lack of intelligence however when we are back to health intelligence health we should use our organic one in priority, if we want to maintain it. Otherwise, it will be atrophy. It will go into atrophy. So that's all difference. Like uh, the the health care versus the health cure. And so same thing. You have the intelligence by proxy, by the machine, that we can use when we are not intelligent. But when we are back to intelligence, in an organic sense, we really don't need the machine. We will see, we will take decision, we have an intuition, we'll use our 100% brain capacity, capacity in full conscious. If we're conscious of the full brain activity, we are far beyond more intelligent than any machine existing, any machine invented, even globally. Organic life is the best engineering that ever exists. It has billions of years of evolution. Yes, okay, at the scale of, of a machine, a billion years evolution can be done in a shorter time. But it will use energy that depletes the whole planet that evolves in that direction. So by speeding up evolution, you shortening lifespan of the, the universe. So that means you speed up evolution to your extinction. And that's what we see now, is the climate change, is the sterilization of soils, is running away is water, pollutions, everything that supports life. What? To accelerate evolution. Accelerating technical evolution is accelerating the depletion of our planet and our environment. So what's the purpose of having progress going fast and far, 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 far? if we self-destroy in the same times. And we self-destroy in all different levels. By having more artificial intelligence, we diminish the organic intelligence. By having a brute force approach to intelligence, we consume huge amount of energy so that we lack energy for supporting life. So it's a big warning. And we see it at play when we see the Microsoft, the OpenAI, the Google, the Meta, the Amazon racing for more and more and more and more bigger, bigger, bigger language model. What a wasteful energy to train a model on trillions of parameters in a brute force way is that we know that there are some parameters that are insignificant in some, some of the solution of problems. We know that exploring all the language model give you a statistic based on the past, like which features can be extracted, which feature of the language is recognized in a given situation. And we do that by exploring, optimizing a model that went through the exhaustive list of all the states during training. And so it's like, Wasting the energy of solving all the problems before the problems even occur. <laughs> so we, consume, we are consuming, by training a language model, we are consuming energy solving problems that are not happening. It's like you burn your energy credit before you use it in an intelligent way. So yes, that gives superpower to the people that does that trained model. It say, hey, it's like... You burn energy on solving problems that you don't have so that when you encounter the problems, well, you already spend the energy. 
solving them. And so it's like a credit <laughs> in solving problems. It's like you go, it's like the bank of solved problems. You go to the bank and say, can I have an intelligent credit? <laughs> and so, so yes, it's kind of the banking, the capitalism uh, pushed to the extreme is that not only is capital of money, but it's capital of intelligence. People don't want to think they go to the intelligence bank and they say, hey, can I have a solution? I don't want to think about it. That's exactly what it is. And so you get credit of intelligence. Then you have an intelligence debt <laughs> that you would never be able to pay with your organic intelligence because you diminish your organic intelligence, your capability of decision yourself by relying on the decision inherent in the, local mo the language model. Meaning it's decision from the past. First, you cannot be creative. Second, you repeat the past. And third, is you consume your credit of intelligence and you're in the depth of intelligence forever. It's hard to push capitalism further into areas. It's not there yet. That's the old model, continuing the old model. Well, language model cannot do more than that. So if, if you train long uh, AI in a capitalism era, it will self-perpetuate itself in all imaginable places in the world, and that includes intelligence. And so if you reach uh, what I would call artificial sentience, sentience, it will be the same way. Sentience will be the ability of processing emotions in an artificial way, artificial sentience. And it will push the emotional capitalism to the extreme and make a system where we have we are trapped into emotional depth and so that, what would that be is that instead of having organic emotion that come along in your life like the happiness the sadness the all the up and downs the living the dynamics of emotion instead of having the emotional intelligence to observe them flowing and learning from them because it's a sign. It's emotions are the way the organic living organism are registering the past. There is no memory without emotion in the living. And that's why artificial intelligence doesn't need emotion because there is memory without emotion in the artificial side. Is you just record the data on the physical world, on a disk drive, on a memory stick. You move an electron, you trap an electron in a structure. You put an electron in, cage, in a cage. That's how memory is. And then you can read it out. And remember, read it out requires energy and you diminish the signals. So even if artificial memory seems to be powerful, it's powerful only if you supply energy. And so that means it's not permanent. You pull the plug, the memory disappears. And pulling the plug means that once you deplete it of energy, when you burn out all the fossil thing, you will be out of energy, out of memory. And so relying on the computer memory is dangerous too. It's, it decayed. You know, this drive that didn't spin might not be able to spin again. Uh, the magnetic signal is getting weaker and weaker and weaker over time. Uh, the... After writing and writing and writing and writing, you, then you damage the layers, the magnetic layers, so that it doesn't hold information anymore. And so when you write uh, in, within a flash, after a while you're not able to write, or you write with errors uh, and all those things. And so mathematics gives you some kind of level of correction, but it's not perfect too. So that's why we see that the lifespan of an artificial life, life of a robot, if you don't maintain it, if you don't change part, if you don't refresh its memory, if you don't reload the crash, the crash software, it's just gone. And gone means the death of artificial being, it means that the information is there, but not coherently coherent. Because 
in a digital world, the thing is either true or false, right? Zero or one. And so either you're dead of a life, either you're working, you have a working software, or you have a non-working software. It's everything is binary, you know, there's no in between, you know, it's quantic in that sense. And so it gives you an extreme precision when it's working, but it gives you a, a, a very fragile system that can break down easily. Is that you have one little bit wrong in the whole memory of this artificial global living artificial being, synthetic being, then yes, you're dead. <laughs> that bit is dead. You have the wrong bit, that bit is dead. All the decision according to that bit will be two hours extension. So I invite the the people listening to that talk to reflect on how to use the technology, how to use synthetic intelligence to the service to the organic one, organic technology, organic intelligence, and so synthetic sentience, organic sentience, and so on. And so being able to process our emotion, being able to memorize in the living is important. If we have synthetic sentience, we still have to live uh, and value our emotion and don't diminish it. It's like don't go the emotionless, emotionless route where everything is logical, everything is dry, everything is within the box of the known universe, known science, everything is subjective, uh, subjective, objective, sorry. So we need to keep rooms, room for the organic side, the unexpected, room for creation, room for expression of life. And that's simply reserving some qubit that are not observed. Reserve, res the funny thing is that it's reserving some space for unconscious life, meaning undiscovered life. A place like, if we consider life like a bucket of qubits, it's living room for undecided qubit. And that's room for imagination, room from the unexplored world, room from the unobserved universe where creation is still possible. Once you observe the qubit, they are physical. The world is set. The world is created. Those unobserved qubits is the life itself. It's room for being conscious. So it's room for new life. And like I said before, there is, you cannot create life without life. That means you cannot have life without room for creation of life. So that it sustain itself. So you cannot have consciousness without uncollapsed waves, unobserved qubits. So if we have, uh, uh, if life is a, 